This is Gravilia wilkinsoniae, or the tumid Gravilia. This weird and wonderful Gravilia is full of surprises. Oh, it's got this awful smell. <laughs> this pungent smell. It has the unfortunate scent of mouse urine, hinting at a long-lost mammal pollinator, but now making it appealing only to insects. But despite the smell, this plant has attracted an array of allies. Private landholders, government staff, conservation groups, asset managers, farmers and scientists, all working together to conserve this species. Discovered on the banks of the Gubrakandra River near Tumut, the species was unknowingly about to be bulldozed to widen a road when discoverer and local naturalist Tom Wilkinson stepped in. The driver was there and, and could explain to him that this is a new, you know, this is a new plan, please, please don't do your roadworks until we can you know, sort something out with the council. Further surveys revealed that the total population contained only 600 plants, all occurring along a 4.5 kilometre stretch of river. About 80% of the population is on private land and then the rest is on Crown land. And that's why they're threatened, because they're on fertile agricultural land. The plants were under constant threats from floods, weeds and as tasty fodder for cows. The only option to save the species was to translocate propagated plants into new areas that had similar habitat to the existing population. The, the whole survival of the species does require uh, involvement of private landholders. After many meetings with local residents, a plan was developed to plant new populations on private land, away from threats. It actually fits into the environment, so we thought, well, let's give it a go. To everyone's surprise, the new plantings, especially the ones near the river, thrived. But if you find the right spot, it will be self-sustaining and in fact can expand quite significantly. But then in 2012, a flood of unprecedented size hit all the wild sites and most of the translocated populations. And certainly when I came to some of the Gravillia sites, they were almost unrecognisable in terms of either the way the rocks had shifted or the amount of debris that um, may have been left there and other plants that had been damaged. So it was, you know, it was almost like the whole place had been wiped clean. The wild populations further declined from 399 to only 210 plants. But this species wasn't about to give up. Some of the translocation plantings done on dry, rocky upper banks that previously weren't growing that well ended up being the ones that survived and thrived. We previously thought it liked to be down by the river and have its roots almost in the water. Over time, the plants on the dry, rocky slope had recruited better than plants down near the river because they weren't competing with weeds and invasive grasses and they were above that catastrophic flood height. But this plant wasn't done with surprises. A new population was discovered 50 kilometres away in someone's backyard. This population has a completely different shape it's a prostrate ground cover, but the flowers are the same, as is the smell. The total population now, which includes our plantings and progeny from the plantings, is, is about 1,700 plants. Today, over 75% of the population is made up from those translocated plants, and the wild population unfortunately, is still declining. Self-sustaining populations are the gold standard criteria for successful translocation. And this one is one of the few 
known examples where it's succeeded. The plantings are contributing a major proportion of the current population, so I think you've got to say that's uh, made a huge difference. But this species could easily have been wiped out without anybody knowing if it wasn't for the quick action of the local community and a little bit of luck on its side. Every landholder has a responsibility for the native flora and fauna of that particular region. And I think that's something we've all got to look at before we actually destroy what we've got further.